A factory pattern is one of the creational design pattern. This pattern is useful when we have to create new objects of similar type and we want a workflow in which we don't have to write the object initialization code again and again. In this pattern, we create a factory class and it is used to hide the implementation code of object creation and only expose methods which will return the created objects. I have already created a video on factory pattern sometime back and you can find its link in the description. But many viewers asked me to create a video on abstract factory class and this video is just about that. An abstract factory's core purpose and use is similar to every other abstract class and that is to have both implementation and definition of behaviors. In the case of factory pattern, when we have to create two or more factory classes, then we can use an abstract factory as a common base for them. Let's now see this code example how this is done but before that please take a moment and subscribe to this channel if at any point of watching this video you think that you like it. This will be a great help for the videos to reach an even larger audience. So let's get started with the code and the first thing that I am going to do is to create an interface for our factories. So let's just create an interface and we can call it iFactory. Now this interface is going to have the definition for a single method which is the get data and it is going to be the method which is going to return the created object and this method is going to accept an integer as an argument and that integer is going to act as an identifying information for the objects that we need to create and return from the factory classes. So object get data and int let's call it type. So right now we are returning an object but it would be better if we wrap this object into another specific class and we can create a new class and we can call it factory data item. This class is going to have a property for the data item which is going to be attached with this class. So public and then object let's just call it data item and we can only have the getter for that because we are going to use the constructor to set the value of the data item so get and then return and we are going to need to create another private field for this data item so let's just do that above this property so private and then object underscore data item and now it's time to create the constructor so public factory data item and we need to have the argument for the data item object which we need to set at the time of the initialization of this class so underscore data item equals to data item and now we can use this type in the interface and also in the abstract factory to create the abstract factory we need to create an abstract class and this can be named as abstract factory and we need to implement the i factory interface information so i factory interface so now let's create an abstract method so public abstract get data actually we also need to provide the type over here factory data item get data and then int type so we are not providing the implementation details of this factory data item over here we can choose to do that but it is better if the classes which are implementing this abstract factory do that but we can have other behaviors added or attached to this factory class or abstract factory class which is going to be common for all the different factory classes which are going to implement this abstract factory. This will make sure that none of the code which is written inside this abstract factory is going to be repeated again and again in all the different factory classes. So our factory interface is done, our abstract factory is done and now it's time to create the factory classes. But first we need to determine for what objects we need to create a factory class. For that purpose, I'm going to create two sets of classes. The first set of classes are going to be shape objects and the second one are going to be the color objects. So let's just create regions for them. So region shapes and we can also create region colors. So colors. 
So these classes are simple. First we need to create the classes themselves and then we also need to create an enumeration to be able to provide identifying information to the getData method of the factory classes so that the factory classes can know which object they need to create and return from the getData function enum shape type and we can use simple shapes over here and also remember to provide integer values for all of these enum values so circle equals to one and then square equals to two and then rectangle equals to three and we can create simple classes like class circle and we can provide a method which we can use to identify which class is this so public void get info and we can simply write to the console which class this is so console dot write line and then let's write this is circle or this is a circle and we can copy and paste this class for a square and rectangle too so we are done with the shape classes and now it's time for the color classes i am going to copy this entire code because these classes are also going to be more or less the same like the shape classes and our purpose is to see different abstract factories in action so it doesn't really matter what classes we are going to use to create and return their objects from the factory classes so now instead of shape we can use a color and let's use color values over here so red green and blue and i'm also going to rename these classes as well so there you go the classes have been renamed and now it's time to create the factory classes for these two sets of objects or classes and the factory classes are going to implement from this abstract factory that we have created so first let's just create the factory class for the shapes and we can call this factory class as shape factory so shape factory and this is going to inherit from abstract factory implementing its information so we have a public abstract factory data item get data type of method over here we are going to need to override it now inside this method what we need to do is first we need to create an object of factory data item type and then we need to check which object we need to create by checking the type argument and then we need to create and initialize a new object and then finally we need to return this factory data item which will have the object associated with it inside the underscore data item field so first let's create factory data item field so we don't really need to initialize it right now we can simply return it and then we can use this switch block to check which object we need to initialize so i'm just going to typecast this type into the shape type and now let's have cases for all the available shapes so case shape type dot circle inside this case we need to create a new object for this factory data item equals to new factory data item and we need to provide the value for the data item and that can be a simple object which we need to create depending on the type which is provided as the argument so for circle we can create a new circle now the rest of the stuff is just repetitive code so i'm just going to copy and paste for the rest of the shape types so a square and then we need to create a square and then rectangle all right so our shape factory class has been finished and now we can create the colors factory and it is also going to be the same as this shape factory so i'm just going to copy and paste and replace the shape references with the color references so there it is our color factory and now we have two factory classes one for the shapes and the other for the color objects 
And now it's time to create specific shapes and colors using these factory classes. First, let's create a new instance of this shape factory. So, shape factory equals to new shape factory, and we can also create the instance for the color factory too. Equals to new color factory, and now we can fetch newly created objects from these factories by just providing the identifying information. So, circle circle equals to shape factory dot get data and the type is actually we need to first cast it into integer and then shape type dot actually not color circle now this method get data is going to return an object of the type factory data item and we can fetch the circle object by getting the value of data item property and we also need to typecast it into a circle because this is just an object so this is how we can create a new circle and get its instance from the shape factory and now let's just call the circle objects get info method to print on the console what kind of object or what kind of class it is so circle is created and now we can create a new color so let's create a red color so red equals to color factory dot get data we need to provide the integer value of the type so color type and then red dot data item as red so red dot get info and now let's run the code but before that let's also write console dot actually console dot read line to be able to see what is printed on the console so we have the type of the classes printed on the console this is a circle for the circle class and this is a red color for the color red class so this means that our factory classes are working fine in returning a new object depending on the type and that's how you create an abstract factory class which can be used for a number of other concrete factory classes and with that i'm going to take my leave from this video do let me know what you think about it and if you have any questions feel free to use the comments area also if you think you like this video then place a like on it and also click on the subscribe button i'm going to meet you all in the next video till then have a great time